Hey everybody, my name is John from Community Life Church and this is Meals Ready to Eat from the Bible. Today's episode is Look Toward the Heavens, Keep Your Eyes on Heaven and Live by Faith. Now Abraham believed God and God reckoned it to him as righteousness and we can do the same and this is the great example of Abraham's life. So now God wants us to keep our eyes in heaven, his dwelling place, and he gave Abraham something to do when he told him to look at and count the stars because God was planning for him and through him something that was greater than the total number of the stars. And we're going to look at what God says when he told him to do this, but he wanted Abraham to look at something that was much bigger than himself. So he said, look towards the heavens, look at the stars. Okay, let's take a look at Genesis 5, 17, and let's... Uh, See what we got here. This is Genesis 15, 5 through 7, excuse me. And he took him outside and said, Now look toward the heavens and count the stars, if you are able to count them. And he said to him, So shall your descendants be. Then he believed in the Lord, and he reckoned it to him as righteousness. And he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess it. That's Genesis 15, 5 through 7. So this is when Abraham's life changed. And in a similar fashion, you know, our lives can change as well. Our lives can be changed just like Abraham's lives were changed. Abraham believed what God had told him, and he trusted God, what, he trusted what God had said, and he allowed God to, say, to change him. And we are called to do the same. We're called to the same position. So look at the heavens. What does that mean? What is God talking about? Well, we have to keep our eyes on God and what he is doing, not on the earth and what we see here. <coughs> Excuse me. Nothing on this earth, nothing we see now is able to overcome God. He is not afraid of anything going on here. Now, we may be afraid of what we see, what we read in the news, what we see on the Internet. That does not scare God. If you are able, that means, of course, that neither Abraham or us can count the stars, which is an acknowledgement that God is more powerful than we can imagine. And so are his promises. His promises have power. They do not lack power. So shall your descendants be. What we do now has an impact on the future. God says this to Abraham and to you and to me as well. What we do now changes the future. What we do now, how we live, has an impact and an, an effect on the future. Then Abraham believed, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now this is a change. Abraham was following God, but he had reservations. Now he realizes that he can, that he can have nothing holding him back. It was all in with God or not. And God calls all of us, each of us, every one of us to do the same. <coughs> he calls us to the same level of faith. You can see this, for example, in Romans 1.17, where it tells us to live by faith. And we all have to respond to this call. So, and then, I am God. This is what God says. I am God and I am the Lord. There is no other Lord or God. Sometimes we forget and we start to think that and act like we are God, like we're in charge. That's what Abraham did. I brought you out of Ur. So you are happy and comfortable in your place where you live with your family. And God, but God calls us out in what we can think of as a great adventure. It may not physically or emotionally be comfortable, but he calls us out on this great adventure to a new thing. I gave it to you. Whatever God calls us from, he will give us a place to go to. We don't get to pick the place, just whether or not we're going to go to the place. And you will possess it. Now go walk in it. So the, the act of Abraham going and walking in the promises of God, walking in the land that God had promised him, was Abraham taking possession of that. And we're to do the same. We have to act like we own what God has already told us he's going to give us. So there's a point of life uh, in, in the lives of every person where the future, excuse me, where we have to decide to follow God or not. This is that time for Abraham, and we all come to the same place, and we all have to do the same. Now, once Abraham surrendered, <coughs> excuse me, his life to God, life and will to God, the future was open to him. His future changed. This, this, um, the world would be changed by what he was doing, and nothing would be the same. The same can be said for each person following Jesus. Now, this does not mean that Abraham lived perfectly. You and I don't live perfectly. That's not the point. It's not in, Abraham wasn't even close to perfection. But Abraham, and Abraham actually questioned God. And here's what he said just before it happened. Let me read this. Abraham said, O Lord God, 
what will you give me since I am childless and the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damascus? That's Genesis 15, to, chapter 15, verse 2. Abraham is just like each one of us. And sometimes we're not sure of how God is going to do what he promised, what he said he would do. So what is the lesson? What do we learn from all this? Well, we learn from Abraham that we are to trust God, to follow God, to obey God, to live by faith. And we see that working out in the life of Abraham. And we see the future being changed by God through Abraham. And we will see it for each one of us. We would really appreciate a like and subscribe. If you want to know more about Jesus and how to get to know him, how to follow him, how to live for him, check us out at clchurch.cc. That's clchurch.cc. We meet Sunday mornings, 1030. We have meetings during the week. We have devotionals on YouTube and Facebook during the week. And we also stream our services to YouTube and Facebook. So you can watch us there. I hope to see you Sunday morning. Thanks for watching. Bye.